Hello there Leos, welcome to your tarot reading. I am so terribly sorry that this video is so late. Um, I hope it is still helpful for you. I hope you are still finding it, that it resonates. And whatever you're dealing with for this month, I hope that this provides a little bit of guidance for you. Um, so, I actually had two messages that came out for you. So, I'm going to talk about them um, in succession, okay? So, first of all, when I was shuffling out the spread, um, it took me a really long time to, to form like an image. And then once that image came out, the card started coming out. So, what I saw was very distinctly, um, there is a man, he's driving down like a very um, mountain, hilly, hilly road, okay? It's a two-lane street, and there are a lot of hills, so he's going up the hill, and he's in this really uh, small, white, compact car. It's a very small car. It looks almost like the 80s in rural America somewhere. It looks like the 80s. Um, so he, he's, uh, he's like, um, I, I can only see the back of the car and then, um, he goes up the hill and then as he descends the hill, you see this power plant, okay? And, and, and power plants has that, uh, insignia that denotes radiation. So there's a, a power plant. It's white. It's looming in the distance. So it seems like that's his final destination. And then you see him getting closer and closer. The power plant looms larger and larger. It's emitting smoke. And then his car kind of stops at the gate. There's like security. He gets through, gets to the base of the power plant. And he steps out of the car with um, a, a full suit and also his briefcase, okay? So I was thinking that he works there. He works in this very intimidating um looming like he you know it seems like for many of you you might work in a um in an environment in an organization that is um like heavily scrutinized okay that's what it feels like to me because it, the the power plant is huge it's emitting smoke so who knows what it's uh you know allowing to leak into the environment right and then on top of that, it has this huge radiation sign, okay, it's, it's huge, the, the emblem is like on the side of those uh, smokestacks almost. So I feel that for, for many of you, um, for whatever reason, there's a lot of commotion around the work that you're doing. Either uh, the company, the organization is facing a lot of scrutiny from the press, from the public, from the neighbors even that, that surround the, that physical structure. And so I do feel like, I, I feel that a lot of you guys identify very strongly with the work that you do. You know, you want work that is meaningful. You want work where your, your skills and your talents can be on full display. And especially for many of you, you might be like the, um, the, the voice, the face, the, um, the model, the mascot for whatever it is that you're, you're, you're working at. You might be a sales rep for example, for a company that you work at. So you're kind of like the face of the product, okay? You could be very visible in the limelight, especially for many of you. A lot of uh, Leos are politicians, okay? And so um, I, I do feel there's a lot of like, um, you're, you're kind of like in an environment that might be facing a lot of scrutiny and you're doing the, the, the damage control. You might be the PR person that everyone reaches out and you might have to deflect questions, deflect, um, you, you might have to create your own red herring in order to distract people from um, something from something you might be hired to take on a uh, position so that you can do damage control. You might be hired on by a firm in order for them to fix something that they've made a mistake on. Now, we are moving away from that November time frame, and November time frame was problematic, um, especially for a lot of work environment, um, and especially for when it comes to their public image, because we had a um, we had a, um, a very profound Mercury retrograde period where a lot of deeply buried things are coming to light, okay, or were coming to light. It was in the sign of Scorpio, 
And so I felt like a lot of things that people kind of sweep under the rug, a lot of deep, dark held secrets, especially as it pertains to companies, organizations and uh, work environment and things like that. Things that people in power were trying to hide from the public or truths that they were trying to distort or, or, you know, just things that they shove away when no one is looking. I feel that all of that might have come to light recently. And as a result of it, you're kind of called in to um, to do some damage control. Okay, so so that's what I, I was feeling. I just feel like the work environment that you're in is facing a lot of scrutiny. The people you might work with, they might have their own personal issues that's uh, facing a lot of scrutiny. Okay, and they're faced with a lot of scrutiny. And I am sensing a lot of people will come to you for the month of December. Um, asking for advice like should I do this should I do that because they're really concerned about their public image and you know it doesn't mean that they're superficial or vain or set shallow I just feel like there's something going on here where somebody's job might be at stake and you're kind of called in to um, either provide some guidance provide some legal advice expert advice even how to de-escalate tension how to de-escalate a, a potentially um, volatile situation, how to, you know, do all of those things, okay? Um, I also feel like, you know, you're, you're good at your job. You're paid ve very well for many of you. You're paid very well for the work that you're doing. Um, but behind it, I feel that, you know, it, it, it's, it's a job. So you try to do what you're told. So for example, you work with a, um, you're, you're hired on as a contractor to do some damage control for a company and you might not like that company very much. And so, you know, even if you don't agree with it, uh, agree with the things that are trying to hide, the things that they're trying to uh, sweep under the rug, you're hired to do this, this job. And so you will do it to the best of your capability. So I don't see any moral ethical conflicts here. I just feel almost as if there's a lot of fires to put out, okay? So going back to that image, there's a second part. So, you know, he steps out and uh, he's in a suit, really nice suit in this mini car, but he's in a suit and he, he holds a briefcase. And so, you know, my initial thought was, oh, he, he works here, he's an employee. But then I see him, um, I see him like with uh, in that briefcase it's not like papers or laptop or, or things like that I guess in the 80s they didn't have laptops it's not like papers uh, it's a it's a science kit okay so he has like um, those um, what are those the, the, the droppers where you take a, a little bit of a water sample and you put it into a, uh, a slide things like that he has a dropper he has machines to test the radiation level and so he opens it up, puts it on top of the um, the front of the car, the hood of the car, and then he starts to go around the um, he starts to go around the area, the 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 power plant. He starts inspecting. So that's when I was like, oh, he's an inspector. So he's not called out to do some damage control, even though that message applies to some of you. Okay, but on the other hand, you might be also called in to inspect, to appraise, to make a final determination on something, to see whether or not it's sound, whether or not it's safe, whether or not it meets the regulation and the standards. And I feel like for many of you, and this could be, you know, just literally just one person I'm speaking to, but I feel like there was something that was unearthed all of a sudden it, it just came to light and you know you're called in to do the fine to make the final determination to inspect to appraise to look at it and he does his 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 thing okay he walks around multiple times collecting multiple samples and then at the end of it what i saw at the end of that picture uh, of that scene was um he puts in a um he takes like a, a poster from his car Okay, and then you see him get back into the car. He drives away. the 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 security gates closes behind him. Gets he he stops the car. Gets back out, and he puts this giant poster with the radiation, the hazardous sign on it, 
hazard hazardous sign on it and it says like deem unsafe okay that's what it says deemed unsafe and so i feel that there's a situation around you where you guys are in a very important position to um to protect people from okay you're bringing something to light so that people can be made aware so that people can you know knowledge is power right but i feel like there might be something that is unsafe that is unfit and you're drawing attention to it you're you're calling it for what it is okay so in a way this could be in a work environment but then i also feel that for many of you um the the word unfit parent came in okay so you might be you might be for example a social worker where you're inspecting homes the the home environment is this a, a safe place for children to be in you might be inspecting like a retirement home where they take care of elderly people you might be inspecting like a, a preschool um even a high school you might be like you know one of those uh, superintendents or one of those inspectors academic inspectors to make sure something is meeting the requirements it's passing you know the regulations and the codes and make sure other people are abiding by it because if they don't abide by it it can cause long term negative impact on not only you know the people that are involved but the surrounding area hence this power plant okay it generates power for the entire area and if something happens to it it will affect negatively the entire area in terms of you know power surges or even worse like chemical spills and things like that so i feel that you're taking your job very seriously and you're wielding a lot of power you're wielding a tremendous amount of power where you, what you say what your findings are what your final determination is it uh, will affect a lot of people and um i just have to say leos um you know us fire signs were incredibly incredibly ethical we try to always walk down that straight and narrow path okay um we're humans we do stray from it okay but i do feel that for a lot of fire signs in general um ethics and morality goes a long way you know there's always a right and there's always a wrong and we don't really mix the two okay uh water signs always know there's a right and a wrong but they make justifications based on their emotional attachment to a specific outcome air signs can rationalize they rationalize well it's wrong in this context but it it could also be right in that context i feel like for a lot of uh fire signs there's a right and there's a wrong and no matter what no matter what the circumstance you know the, the circumstance doesn't justify whether or not something is right or wrong those things are not malleable and so i feel that you are wielding a tremendous amount of power here and you're doing the right thing because you understand that you understand that um by i guess succumbing to you know pressure or by uh not listening to your own sense of morality it affects a lot of people a lot of people around you a lot of people that might not even be family members that you you might not even know them you know personally but it affects their families it affects their livelihoods it affects their health and so you're doing everything that you can to uh make your final determination on something possibly to close something down to shut something down that's not healthy or to you know um or to like find justice in a situation okay um i see a lot of people here where you you might be looking at you know the way somebody um is is raising a child the way somebody is taking care of another person and you're disagreeing with the way in which they do things and for some of you you know it is the holiday season we're going to be dealing with a lot of family members so i do feel some of these issues are coming up in the family unit you know it's like you should have done this as a mother you should have done that as a father you shouldn't treat your parents like this you know all all of those discussions i feel 
is coming into the picture and I keep seeing like unfit. Somebody is unfit to do something. Somebody is unfit to take care of themselves or um, they're not uh, mentally there and they're, they have somebody else who's managing their estate or their who, who's like a power of attorney and that person is unfit because they're being they're taking advantage of the person who's not able to take care of themselves so I feel like all of these ethical moral debates are coming into the picture and I do see you discussing all of these things with family members in a very passionate manner I don't see it being like an argument where we're arguing and screaming and and you know um, slicing each other left and right I don't see that I just feel heavy discussions over somebody's qualifications over somebody's capabilities over you know whether or not something is fit or whether or not the situation needs to be shut down and closed off okay so that's what I'm seeing and oh, we're 16 minutes into the reading um, I just wanted to get that out of, out of the way okay because I, I felt like it's much calmer now I feel a lot calmer. Um, the the power plants, you know, the the, the looming sign, that radiation sign is um, is so strong. Like it, it was so big, it was so visible, and I feel that it just needed that message needed to be conveyed because I feel like there's a potentially toxic hazardous situation. And it needs to be called out. It needs to be labeled for what it is so that people know to avoid it. And it needs to be shut down. Okay, so that's just the bottom line. Um, on the other hand, on the lighter note, on a lighter note, okay, um, I, I do, do see two people here. So let me talk about these two people. I feel like that was a work situation. So let me talk about these two people here. Um, I have one person who is, um, who, they're, they're very much still interested in you, but I feel that you're turning your back on them, and you're turning away from them, and you're finding love and inspiration and passion and, you know, reciprocity elsewhere, okay? I feel that um, you are upset and frustrated with, with this person, and this person has shown up here as the Knight of Cups, okay? It seems almost like he's got a blob. It's like a, a, a paper bag over his head. Okay, that, that's what it feels like, doesn't it? So I feel that you are frustrated with this person. I feel that they do a lot of things that frustrate you. Um, I also feel like they're overly affectionate and possibly a little bit needy. And I also feel that they're looking for you, wondering what you're up to thinking about you, um, possibly even, you know, trying to reach out to you. And I feel that you're resp you respond when you want to, but this person is no longer kind of like your top priority. I feel like once upon a time, the love between the two of you might have been very hot and heavy, okay? Um, because I, I do see an energy of like opposites tr attract. Um, there might be a huge age difference, there might be like a cultural difference, there might also be like, um, you know, it, it might be like an interracial coupling type of a, th a thing, but I, I feel like there's a, a, a certain degree of, you know, um, like, uh, you guys are very dissimilar, okay, very different from one another. And there's a certain degree of mismatch. And because of it, it's very passionate, it's very fun, it's exciting. But it ceases to be those things because I, I do feel that you might be um, turning elsewhere for love and for validation and for, you know, a relationship. And so this person is wondering what you're up to. This person is like not really sure how you feel about them. And they wish they could know how you feel about them because they're wondering and, and, and always thinking. And, you know, um, if you are a cross watcher and this sounds like you, I just feel like with fire signs, what you see is what you get. Okay. Uh, fire signs are very straightforward. If you're, uh, if they're communicating with you, they like you. If they're not communicating with you, they, they pretty much have um, exited the picture. And so I feel that for many of you, you have left this person kind of like hanging or you've just left them out in the cold. 
and they might you know be bombarding you with messages but I, I do feel that your heart is already elsewhere and then I also feel that um, I also feel for some of you um, you might in like at the end of the day uh, decide that this this whatever you had with this past person I feel like it was lacking in emotional depth it was lacking in like you know it's like you talk about one thing and then they don't have an interest in it so they steer the subject somewhere else or they talk about a certain topic and you have no interest in it and so you just kind of like change the topic so I feel like there's very little compatibility and it created a situation where there was no chemistry there was no emotional depth to the conversation to the interaction and uh, when when you it 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 can feel to me like it's very time consuming or quite draining to be around this person not because they're a bad person it just feels to me like it requires a lot of effort just to keep the conversation going because you guys don't have a lot in common um, I do feel that they really like you and I do feel this person is incredibly intelligent incredibly smart but they're very smart queen of swords super smart okay um, their their mind is very sharp they're very discerning and, and perceptive and you know they're they're probably like the really book smart type of person but emotionally they're not very intelligent and emotional intelligence basically means that we know how to read body language we know that when somebody is like doesn't want to talk to us and so we end the conversation you know how sometimes you have like uh, co-workers who you're super busy you're at your desk working right and they see that you're working but they keep talking and talking and talking and you don't want to be rude and tell them hey you know I'm, I'm working get out of here um, that's what I mean by emotional intelligence being able to read nonverbal communication being able to pick up on you know people's uh, state of, uh, of, of being being able to being aware of your surrounding looking at people and being able to read facial expressions to know if they're sad to know if they want to be approached to know when they want to be left alone emotional intelligence so I feel like somebody here is very incredibly uh, intelligent but they might lack the emotional intelligence okay and, and so I, I feel almost like you know you could have a bad day and you want to talk to them about your bad day and they you know you look distressed right and they should they, they should know that and then rather than letting you vent letting you talk they steer this the topic away from something that is not even remotely important and so I feel that it, it frustrates you and it, it hurts you too to feel that you're not validated okay to feel that they're not acknowledging that you've had a bad day they're not acknowledging your your distress they're not picking up on these cues and you're wondering you know if they care about me they should be more attentive they should more, be more considerate but I just feel that they're lacking in the ability it's not the ability to sympathize or empathize if they're aware then they would know they're just lacking in the ability to pick up cues hence this person it's almost like they've got that plastic bag or the the paper bag over their head they're walking around you know not a bad person at all but they're lacking in being able to know their environment being able to sense their environment being able to navigate their environment successfully in an emotional way okay so this is somebody that is uh, that doesn't form emotional attachments and so they're they're kind of um, you know their their friendship circle might be very very small it might also be quite superficial um, they don't have depth to their relationships with other people and I feel that you're you're understanding that I do see you turning away we have here the Knight of Cups and the Ace of Wands. This pangolin, I guess, um, with the swan is turning away, walking away, moving away from a situation. 
mainly because I do feel that you need more validation. You need that sense of reciprocity. You need somebody who is a lot more more considerate. Okay, like in your eyes, you feel this person is very inconsiderate, but I, I do sense that you want somebody who's a lot more emotionally available. And so enters this person, and this is the second person here. We have here the Queen of Cups. And um, I'm not reading the 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 uh, the suit as a person anymore because we have a lot of cross marchers. We have a lot of people with different planetary aspects, and um, you know astrology is very complicated. It's um, the sun sign, the moon sign, the rising sign. That's like scratching the surface. That's like three percent of what astrology entails. Okay, and so by saying you know this is a water sign. Uh, sun, moon, or rising, I feel that it, it just glosses over the entire study of astrology. And so I'm going to read it as just, you know, the energy of a person. Um, this is somebody who's a lot more emotionally available, okay? Just emotionally available. Um, you have a strong emotional connection with them. And because you have such a strong emotional connection with them, you start to feel passion and chemistry with them. You start to feel, and I, I do feel like this person is quite attractive, very beautiful, very attractive. Um, I'm seeing somebody who's like very well dressed, okay? Like they, they dress really, really well. Um, they look presentable. They look very nice. They smell good. They're always clean. Um, they're, they're made up, so like they're, they could have a lot of, uh, not a lot of makeup. There's nothing wrong with wearing a lot of makeup, but I feel like, they're, they're dressed to go out. Like every time you see them, they look picture perfect. They're dressed to go out. They take care of themselves. They look great. And they're beautiful and attractive. And, you know, they just look clean. And, and they just look like they know what they're doing. That they know um, that they're aware, you know. Whereas this person was kind of like fumbling in the dark. This person is very aware. And so you're shifting from the energy of one person who's kind of clueless to another person who's a lot more, um, I guess, considerate, a lot more attentive, a lot more uh, observant, a lot more observant. Um, I also feel that you could be dating two people. One person is quite fun. The other person, um, there's a very strong emotional connection. There's strong attraction. But they might be a little bit more on the selfish or the possessive side, okay? So one person might be a little bit more possessive. Like, I, I didn't mean to say uh, selfish. I meant to say jealous, but selfish came out, so maybe. Um, so selfish or, or like they're a little bit more wrapped up in what they want, in their emotions, in what they want, in, in, in what they want to hold on to. And I feel like the, the emotions are very, very intense, okay? This is somebody that, you know, you dated them for a really short time and they talk about love. And it, it's not like they're just blurting it out. I feel that they feel emotions very strongly and so they want to express themselves. And, and they're just very honest, very open with how they feel and they know how they feel at all times. Whereas this person was not like that. They held back. They didn't communicate emotionally. And so this is a breath of fresh air for you. Um, I would urge you, the passion is really strong here, Ace of Wands. I would urge you to slow down. You're, you're kind of like going from one extreme to the other. That's what it feels like to me. And so I would urge you to slow down because I feel like this person over here there's a lot of passion, there's a lot of chemistry. You guys are a very good match. Um, but they might be in a position where, you know, they're thinking about like, let's put a ring on it. Let's get married. Let's, um, let's start a family. And it's like three months in the relate, three months, three weeks into the relationship and they're already planning these things. And so I do feel possessiveness. I do see a sense of jealousy with this person. It's someone who's fiercely, fiercely loyal, but they're also fiercely protective of the things and the people that they love, okay? She's like gripping and, and holding on to this lobster. And then I also feel like 
the realization here with this judgment card is you're a little bit taken aback by the intensity of this person. When you were dating this person, you wanted intensity. You wanted passion. You wanted intensity. And then, so, so this relationship was lacking in that. So you might have moved away from it. And now you're meeting exactly the person that you're, you were hoping for. Intensity, passion. And then you realize that the intensity is too much. So you're kind of like stuck in this um, kind of um, loop, okay? And that's what I mean by you're moving away from one extreme and landing yourself in the other end of the spectrum. And so if you're still dating this person, um, I almost feel like, you know, it's that hazardous sign. It's that hazardous sign where it's telling you to caution. It doesn't mean they're bad people. It just means, you know, you, you have to think about why is this person so possessive? Why is this person so jealous? Why is it three weeks into this relationship and they're already talking about marriage, talking about children, talking about, you know, moving in together, getting a house, getting engaged. So mull these things over, mull over these decisions because with the Ace of Wands, it denotes to me uh, impulsiveness as well. And so we want to make sure we are on the same page before we can make these, you know, major decisions. Okay? Especially if we have children in the picture as well. So I feel like something is starting off really, really fast. It's great. It's passionate. And I feel that this person really likes you. And they, they might feel that you are the one. And then I also feel you have that ex coming back into the picture. And I feel like they're totally opposite people. On like, um, at first glance, or from what you remember, or from what you know about these two people, they're totally different people. But in its essence, I feel one person is a lot more expressive. The other one was very non-expressive. But at the heart of the matter, their energies are very similar, okay? They might have issues when it comes to emotional expression. One is too much, one is too little. Try to find that balance, okay? You might be that middle ground for them, for both of them. You might be that anchor point, and that's where they gravitate towards you. So just be careful that you have to moderate a relationship. Just be careful that you have to be the one where the other person leans on because that can create, you know, codependency. So, you know, you want to be careful of that, okay? Um, the second image that I saw for you was, um, I see this dark corridor. It looks almost like a hospital or like a school. It has a lot of different rooms and it, it seems very clean and kind of sterile. And it's dark. It's, um, I can see a little bit, like I would say 30, 40% visibility. Um, it's dark out, the hallway is very dark, and I see this man kind of walking down this corridor and he he can't really see he, he can't really see, right? It's dark. So he's holding out his hands. He's walking slowly, he's holding out his hands, trying to feel, you know, for where the walls are, what's in front of him, so that he doesn't trip and fall. So he's walking and it makes me feel really uncomfortable. I'm looking at him walk down this hall, but I feel the discomfort because, you know, when we're in that kind of an environment uh, where we don't know what's underneath us, where we don't know what's 10 feet in front of us, it can feel very unnerving and it can also feel just really uncomfortable, vulnerable and exposed and uncomfortable. Okay, that, those are like the messages that came through, especially like vulnerable. And so I do sense um, heavily that you're in a environment where something is very new and it makes you feel a little bit vulnerable and a little bit exposed and a little bit uncomfortable as well. Do I take off running? You know, do I just run to the end of the hall and, and, and hope that everything will be okay? And you know, what use is it if, if, it, if I'm meant to get hurt? Do I just get an early start and just run and, and make it fast and swift? Or do I slowly put myself through this agonizing discomfort 
fear, feeling around for what's in front of me, feeling around for what's uh, around me, and prolonging the discomfort, right? So I, I feel like those were the thoughts going through this man's head as he heads down this hallway. From what I can see, the hallway is clear. There are no str like um, chairs just thrown about. There's nothing that can really hurt him. It's a sterile environment. And so I just feel like a lot of what you're experiencing is the novelty, the newness of a situation where you're going to have to kind of, it's like you don't have the, the map, you don't have the blueprint. Uh, you don't have the previous knowledge about the situation. And so you're kind of like thrown in and, you know, forced to figure things out. For some of you, you might be dating somebody who might have children and you're doing this for the very first time. And you're just like, I don't know how this is going to play out, but you know, I'll do it little by little. You might be meeting, you might be like in a relationship and you're meeting somebody's parents for the first time. And you're just like, I don't know, it's going to be, you know, a little bit strange, uncomfortable, awkward even. Uh, but let me just jump in and then feel things out. And then for others, you might be taking somebody excuse me you might be dating somebody who is ethnically culturally um, very different from you religiously very different from you uh, and you know you you've always had like preconceived notions in the back of your mind it's gonna be like this or they're like this you know so and so is like this this race this religion is like this this culture is like this and so you're kind of like nervous about like how to bridge that cultural divide, how to bridge that divide in general with a significant other or somebody that you're dating. And I do feel um, what's coming through is relationships that are very new, like a budding romance where there's still a lot of chemistry, a lot of getting to know each other, a lot of like, you know, showing your, your best selves to each other because the relationship is still very new. And new love is always, you know, really sweet, but it comes with it that sense of butterflies in your stomach because you don't know everything about the other person and you're still trying to figure things out and you're still learning about each other and it makes it really exciting. So I feel like this spread is all about that, that you know, that it's like a, a fizzy, almost like champagne sparkling water. It's like that, the, the, the fizziness, the fuzziness, the butterflies in your stomach that comes with the territory that comes with a new job, it comes with a new relationship, it comes with like um, a situation where you're thrown into an environment that is very brand new to you. You don't have a map, you don't have, um, you don't have guidelines, you don't have like a manual for how to do things. All you can do is dig through, you know, your, your lab kit and you know take a little bit of sample here take a little bit of sample there um take samples test the parameters and then reach your conclusion so i feel like you're in a very good environment to exp i don't feel like it's experimentation but i feel like it's like testing the waters okay testing the waters navigating this environment so that you can make the final determination like you know is this worth my time is this gonna work out for me is this what I thought it would be and I feel that you are very pleasantly surprised that what you thought was one way was another what what you thought this person was gonna be turns out to be another okay that can be good or that can be bad but I do feel this sense of like you know this fizziness coming through where you're experiencing the, the joys of the anticipation, the excitement and the trepidation, all of it. And I feel like it's all surrounding a new situation that you're navigating and especially a new relationship, okay? Um, I've talked enough about that. So I have the Ace of Wands here and this is what I saw earlier as um, you have the stick of power in your hand to change a lot of lives and to make things better for other people. I also feel we have the world, a cycle is closing up with another person, with one person, and something new is coming into the picture with this world card. And then we also have as well the Hierophant and the Seven of Cups, okay? 
Um, I usually look at this in, in tandem, like the reading the cards and how they interact with each other. This is all your findings. These are all your results. These are all the things that you imagine something to be. And you're making that final determination, writing up your analysis, writing up your assessment, writing up your um, findings. And, you know, people are deferring to your judgment, okay? So, the last four cards is very much about, you know, the major energies for this year because we have the, the Hierophant and the Hangman, which are major arcana cards. So, I do sense here. A conclusion is reached. People are waiting for your final say, for your final word, for your word of wisdom to tell them whether or not something is fit or whether or not something is a good fit. Okay, so you might even have like two potential suitors waiting around for you and asking you to decide. Okay, asking you to decide. Like, is it going to be me or is it going to be that other person? And I feel like you, you've already made up your mind because you want to go for that relationship that has a lot more emotional depth to it. And you're meeting somebody that will show you the depth of emotion like nobody else can. Okay, um, I will leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining me for this reading. I hope it is helpful for you guys. And uh, I, I promise you, I promise, I promise, okay? And this is no jokey matter. Um, I will get your videos out on time. Um, for the month of January, we have the holiday season. Work is slowing down a little bit for me. So um, I should be able to publish them on time, all right? I wish you all a very wonderful holiday season, and uh, I'll see you in January, okay? Take care.